Hello, Mavs. I'm Jesus. And I'm Ian, and welcome to Verbose, the UTA English podcast. Hello, Mavs. How's it going? Welcome to Verbose, the UTA English podcast. I'm here with my wonderful partner, Jesus. Oh, I'm present. <laughs> and I am Ian. Thank you for joining us. And today we're going to be talking about an interesting topic, and one that I'm sure you are all very familiar with, and that is reading. I'm sure you have a lot of reading for your classes right now if you're an English major. Mm-hmm. I know I do. Oh, dude, same, same. Anyway, the, the interesting question we're going to be talking about, or asking, I suppose, is why should we read now? What does reading give us? What does it provide for us? Why is it important for us to continue reading in an age of instantaneous tweets and, and information when reading takes such a long time comparatively. Why should we why should we go for that as opposed to a movie or a TV show on Netflix? Yeah, dude, that's an excellent question because to be honest, sometimes I prefer a really good drama yeah, over right. over just sitting down and reading a book. Um, Stranger and, Things just came out. I, oh, I definitely. Dude, dude, don't even <laughs> shut up. Have you, have you seen any episodes yet? Uh, dude, I binge watched the entire second season. Are you, are you, are you kidding me? No. Oh I'm my not god. Kidding. Okay, don't spoil it for I'm me. Not gonna I haven't seen it. I want to go in blind. Right on. I want to go in blind. Yeah. And everybody else should go in blind too. If somebody tries to spoil it for you, just, I don't know, tape their mouth or something. Just give them a, give them a good little love you tap. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Exactly, exactly. Um, but you're right. And especially in the advent of social media with tweets. Um, Instagram, the hashtag phenomenon, yes, all those things. Um, why bother reading something that's not quick and easy to digest? Um, but we actually developed, we got a little outline together on why we should read. Because as English majors, I'm pretty sure if we didn't enjoy reading, we'd be wasting our time. Well, and it's not even necessarily enjoyment of it. It's the fact that it's important. I mean, some people enjoy reading, other people don't. Mm-hmm. But... We all have to, at some point or another in our lives, read. It is pretty and important. And in college, as English majors, we have to do it a lot. Let's be honest. Yeah, whether it's dense texts, articles, peer reviewing your classmates' work, mm-hmm. you are going to have to read a lot. Hopefully, you'd be reading something that you enjoy, but... Hopefully. Unfortunately, that's not always. we're not always that blessed. That's why we take literature classes. Exactly. So... What we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and outline a few reasons as to why you should read instead of watching TV on the couch eating potato chips and why you should sit on a couch, read, and eat potato chips instead. That's right. The first one is the ability to build a larger and more expensive vocabulary. Why is that important, would you say? Okay, so I think that it's pretty important um, for the reason of... Uh, just repetition and redundancy Mm -hmm. when you're writing because let's say that you describe something as laughable but if laughable is the only adjective that you know to describe something then your paper is going to become very stale yes and also actually um what i just said is an as a good example of why you should build a good vocabulary because whenever you build a better vocabulary you don't have to use words like very Mm-hmm. So instead of saying something is very big, you can say something is large, enormous, gargantuan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll give you more options in your writing and in your speaking just to make you a more dynamic and charismatic speaker. Yeah, and that, that's important for a lot of different aspects of the real world because mm-hmm. good speaking skills are something that are scarcely taught and hardly learned nowadays. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, everybody can... Every girl has been told that she's pretty, mm-hmm. but you should tell them that she's... Beautiful, yes. lovely, just angelic, whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do. I mean, granted, I'm totally a ladies' man with all my all my one girlfriend that I've yeah. had. Yeah, but uh, it'll definitely help you in every regard. Mm-hmm. Business, communication, whenever you're speaking to a boss, you can impress them with your technical language. Yes, you can. Yeah, or, you know, the... Uh, whoever you, whoever else you're trying to impress, a friend, someone you admire. Impress all your friends with your expansive vocabulary. It's like, they didn't get into a fight, they got into a kerfuffle. <laughs> I love that word. Oh, dude, I know, it's, it just rolls off the tongue beautifully. Know, it's good. All right, so you want to go into the uh, second point? Yeah, so this one, um, it's great. Reading gives you an outlet. Not only an outlet, but like an intake valve, so to speak, mm-hmm. for creative inspiration. Being a reader is the first step to being a good writer. Exactly. If you read a lot, and not just what you like, if you read just what you like, you're going to be very limited in what you can then take out of that and put it into writing. But if you read expansively, if you read a lot, 
and read things that you wouldn't necessarily go after normally because it's not your genre, it's not what you like, or maybe it's fiction or nonfiction and you don't like the other one of those two. Read anyway. You need to read a lot in order to write well. Reading allows you to absorb information that you can then subsidize in your mind and put back out. As an author, that's very important. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a good creative writer without having some sense of where you stand within the larger world of writing, especially fantasy and sci-fi, which is what I do. Uh, another another good reason to um, read a lot is to avoid cliché yes. and to avoid convention as well. Because if you read things that you don't like, even that is useful because you can use that material and avoid the same mistakes when in your own writing. Yes, that's Whenever very you're important. creating characters, if you don't like the way a character was developed, then don't do that. Yes. But if you never had that knowledge that you didn't like, what that writer was doing with their protagonist, you never would be able to consciously avoid the same mistakes. Right. One Another reason is just plain old mental stimulation, man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just get lost so deep. I'm just saying, you just get so engrossed yes. into a juicy narrative. And it just, the time flies by, you don't eat, you don't sleep, because you just, oh, you want to you find out what happens on the next page. And the thing about that is that you don't get the same amount of mental stimulation because you're when you're watching like TV shows or movies, because you're literally not using as many brain cells. Mm -hmm. It's physiologically a fact that when you're reading, you have to use more of your brain because information isn't being fed to you. You have to pick up your fork, so to speak, and, and put it in your own mouth instead of being fed like a little baby on with his bib. I like that metaphor. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. So don't be a baby with a bib. <laughs> Read. All right, and um, as mentioned earlier, your writing skills will become improved. In my experience, I've read some novels and just articles in general online that are absolutely terrible. Yes. The grammar is awful, the sentence structure is terrible, but I wouldn't know how to avoid the same mistakes unless I was actually actively reading them. In order to reproduce a good work, you have to have a good example of that work. For, and that's not just with reading, it's with a lot of other things, but since we're specifically talking about it, yeah. good examples give us something to follow in order to make something good ourselves. It's also been known that memory retention and attention span is also a lot better whenever you do read, because reading, like video games, is an active medium. You have to actively participate. And whenever you're watching a movie, you can just sit on the couch, miss a few minutes, you're fine. Yes. There's, the movie doesn't demand that much of you to uh, consume. But whenever you're reading, if you miss a word, it could really change the context it of could, a sentence. It could change an entire sentence or chapter. Exactly, if you're not paying attention. And novels tend to be so dense with a lot of information, you have to keep that memory, you have to keep your memory about you and you actually, you actually have to pay attention to what you're reading in order to understand the context. I'm not saying movies don't do that, but generally I cannot honestly remember what happened in the last Transformers movie. I honestly just remember explosions. Yes. And uh, Optimus Prime had a sword, I think. Yeah, but that's all it demanded of me. It's just like, hey, watch this explosion, you baby. Boom, yeah, let, yeah, me, let me spoon yeah. feed it to you. And that's what, that's what I was talking about partially with the mental stimulation. If there's no mental stimulation, you don't get any mental exercise. Therefore, things like, like memory, re memory retention and attention span, I almost mixed up those two words, Freudian <laughs> slip. Uh -huh. Anyway, maybe that was a spoonerism. I don't remember. <laughs> we'll talk about that on a different episode. On another episode of Reverbs. <laughs> but uh, those things... As long as you're exercising your mind, those things will improve just naturally. It's like any other form of exercise. You have to exercise your mind. You gotta create those neural pathways. That's right. Now, Ian, I didn't know about this. I don't know. I don't know if you knew about this. I gotta give you. Gotta give you some credit. Did you know about this? This last point. I didn't know it as a solid, uh, repeatable fact, but mm -hmm. I knew it as kind of a experiential thing. Yeah. Now, this last point that we're referring to is evidently readers have been proven to be more empathetic than non-readers. In an article on Psych Central um, by uh, uh, Rose Turner, a postgraduate research student at Kingston University, London, to quote her, when we, read, when we read, we go by what is simply written on the page and we have to fill in the gaps as we go along, giving us a chance to develop empathetic skills as we try to understand what a character is going through, end quote. So I found that very interesting because I never consciously thought about that Whenever I, because I, I read a lot. I read thing, especially with uh, fiction. Mm -hmm. I've read a lot of different books with very different protagonists yes. of differing races, genders, um, sexes, political identities, occupation, 
whatever, you name it, etc., etc. And I naturally just got absorbed into the narrative, so I didn't really consciously focus on this. Mm -hmm. But it does make a lot of sense knowing that whenever you're reading the character, you're especially when in first person narratives, you're really getting to know this person's thoughts how they think, how they act, how they operate, how they feel about this, how they feel about that. And it really does help me, at least, understand other people's points of view. And there's a the idea there is the fact that we live in such a me-centered culture. You know, social media is all about what you can put forth as an individual. Mm -hmm. Reading gives us something that we don't see a lot on social media anymore, and that is perspective. Mm -hmm. Perspective is different than our own because we are not the character in the book that we're reading the character is a different person and we have to see things from their perspective especially like you said in first person narration therefore if we learn to be able to accept things seen from a different perspective we will be more empathetic and just better nicer people because we'll be able to understand or at least try to understand another person's point of view exactly because we've been there i know i understand that some people argue that protagonists and fictional characters should just be seen solely as that as fictional characters not to be seen as real people but especially with writers like Stephen King who just really spend a lot of time developing their characters it's hard not to because they seem like fully fledged people because of the writer's attention to detail it is easier to imagine what it's like going through their shoes and you're right being empathetic is never a bad thing yeah it can definitely help you in your personal life in your professional life mm -hmm. because you're open to hearing different points of view exactly so i don't see why that would be well how that could harm you in any way whatsoever yeah. so it's a it's a pretty good skill to have and all of these skills actually can make you much more marketable whenever you're out looking for jobs as a professional mm -hmm. especially this is uh this is going out to the um the undergraduate students specifically <laughs> um yeah so it'll really help you whenever you're trying to market yourself because you can use your em your empathetic skills to imagine what employers are looking for, yeah. what you think that um, they want to hear and kind of adhere to that. You can kind of slowly, you know, and gently uh, nudge them into that direction and nudge your presentation into yeah, that Yeah, and it also helps with things like human, human resource things, oh, ha yeah, exactly. having to deal with other people. If you're an empathetic person, and you know how to absorb a lot of information as mm -hmm. well as put that information back out, like what we were talking about with the creative mm -hmm. idea. Having good reading skills allows you to, to do all of those things better. Mm -hmm. Not only can you deal with other people better, but you can deal with material better. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can absorb it, get the main ideas, and put it back out. And yes. a lot of jobs need you to do that. That is necessary as part of their requirements yeah like any of you guys interested in law guess what you're gonna have to read you're gonna have to because, read a lot oh my word have you ever uh, have you ever looked at legal documents i have man legalese is insane it's crazy you have to watch every single word yes you do so and um if you read a lot well then guess what you're gonna be used to trying to analyze all these dense mm -hmm. texts that are deliberately obtuse i feel but you know what it's okay it's fine <laughs> we're gonna get through this yep so but uh, do, you, do you have anything else to anything else I to add? I think that's it, honestly. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. And why don't you, in the comments below, uh, if you feel like it, let us know what book got you into reading. We kind of asked that already, but you know, it's 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 a good question. Mm -hmm. What do you like to read? Like, what what genre are you drawn to? Uh, are you drawn to nonfiction, poetry? What what gets your gears running, so to speak, when it comes to reading something? Well, what do you like to read? I like to read fantasy. You like to read fantasy? Yeah. I'm a big fan of sci-fi. Philip K. Dick, do I enjoy his dream of electric sheep? Well, I dream of electric <laughs> sheep, man. It is. I, I love that stuff. All right. All right. And yeah, and thank you guys very much for joining us. Hit us up on our social media at uh, hashtag verbosepod. Verbosepod, that's correct? Yeah. I, I think so, yeah. And uh, at you. Hello, Mavs. It's your host, Jesus. And as you can probably tell, the audio went out in the podcast episode, uh, the editing software that I was using decided to update and just completely delete the ending of that last episode. And we are terribly sorry to all the maps that were listening. Um, but we just wanted to go ahead and let you know that you can catch us at hashtag verbose pod and add hashtag UTA English if you ever want to reach us. 
And on behalf of the whole Verbose team, I'm your host, Asus, and we are signing off.